Good morning, and welcome to Soul Raymond Ministries Hour of Prayer. And this Tuesday, July the 14th of 2020, I believe today is the Canadian Independence Day, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and if it, that is correct, I know it's sometime this month, <laughs> um, but anyway, I thank God for all of you who have joined us today. And uh, we're not going to prolong the, the time that we have. You know, I, I'd like to just say once again that this is the second month that we've been doing this. We're into uh, week seven. Uh, we began the hour of prayer on Tuesday, June the 6th. You know, God is such a, a wonderful and faithful God that even when we don't exactly know how uh, to complete an assignment that he gives us, one of the things that I have learned over the years is to start. And God, if God is truly the initiator, then he will streamline the process for you. And if you are led by the Holy Spirit, then there's no reason to be concerned about your format. The only thing that we were really instructed to do here was to read John chapter 17 and to read 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 through 6 and to pray according to that. And as a result of that, we have devised a list of people that we will be praying for, nations, uh, situations, and circumstances all over the world. And we are continuously adding things to our list of prayer. And because of the, the lateness of the hour, and if I may say it that way, and I don't mean the time of day, I mean the lateness of the time before Jesus returns. There are so many things that need to get done. And right now, I can honestly see how the word is being fulfilled with the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. But we do know that it goes on to tell us to pray to the Lord of the harvest, that he would send laborers into the field. And that's another thing that we are going to be adding to our list of things to pray for as we continue uh, to pray for the body of Christ, that we add that to our prayer list. Good morning, Sister Brenda. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you, God, already... for his goodness. Go ahead. I say, just thank the Lord for his goodness. All right. We've already started the recording, so you'll know. <laughs> and um, did you have anything that I'm uh, just updating the prayer request uh, list and things that we're praying for? Did you have anything that you would like for me to add? Not, not as of now. I know we have a pretty good list. I, I can't pick up anything right off. So, no. Okay. All right, then. Okay. The laborers thing just came up just as I was uh, speaking. So, and we do, we do want to ask the Lord because his word tells us that we should ask him for help and we need help. Um, okay, so we are going to go ahead and begin with reading um, John 17. I'll go ahead and read John 17 if you like, and then you can read 1 Timothy 2 and the 1 through 6, that uh, scripture in there, unless you're ready to read John 17. <laughs> okay, I'll read John 17. Okay. All okay. right. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, 
that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is the life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I'm, I have manifest thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me in the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sake I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone. But for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all, all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And, glory, and the glory which thou gave me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world had not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Every time, every time we read that prayer, it's, 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 more, it's, it's so touching, praise God, how Jesus Kept, he, we see how he spoke to the Father, and he he had finished his work, and before he was crucified, he, he gave this prayer, praise God. Jesus prayed for the future believers. He prayed for the disciples. He prayed for himself, praise God. And uh, it's important for us to take note how he prayed so we can pray in the same vein about different situations. Because prayer is the way to things being changed. God is still answering prayers. But like you said, there should be more laborers in the vineyard. I heard you when I came on, and I heard the recording had started, so I didn't say anything. <laughs> but uh, the laborers are few, praise God. And um, as believers, 
we really need to be about our Father's business. And it's uh, in, in any way and everywhere we go, we need to share the love of Christ because it's very important that souls be saved and because that's what he died for, that people may believe in the only true God, he says. He is the only true God. He's the only way, even though others may believe that there are other ways to be eternally saved. But I beg to differ. I believe what Jesus says. He's the only one that I ever know of in religion that has given his life, <laughs> and that has died for mankind, that we might live. That's, That's what true. I you know, I was thinking about that the other day. All of the other uh, ways of uh, obtaining uh, obtaining salvation, what people believe, there is none that has given of himself like Christ has given of himself. And the Bible makes so much sense as you read, you know, read the beginning and even know the end, the victory at the end of uh, the the Bible how he paid his pro- he paid the price for mankind and he says here in the prayer that even before the foundation of the world praise god and i thought about a scripture and um it was saying before the foundation of the world uh, a lamb was slain praise god in the scriptures and uh everything that has had has happened and has already been seen before time, because the scripture says that God sees the end before the beginning. So he knows the end. <laughs> he knows the end, praise God, of a matter. We, we look in through the, the tunnels from uh, the beginning to the end, but he knows the end because he created all things. So therefore he would know. <laughs> it's beautiful true. to the even. Very true. And... Um... The scripture, there are two of them that you refer to. I know the one in Revelation 13 that does, when John looked and he saw the lamb that had been slain from the mm-hmm. foundation of the world. And then Peter spoke of it in First Peter 19 and 20. And no, I didn't know those off the top of my head. I Googled them right quick so I can make sure that we put them in there. Yeah, that was good. Thank you for your help, sis. <laughs> because sometimes things just come as you're talking, and I, right. I don't remember all of those scriptures. I know it's right. in the Word, but that's the way we need to do it. One talk, right. another one Google. <laughs> but oh, God right. is good. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting that you said um, about the other religions and They all focus on man's ability to transform himself from this to that, to reach enlightenment, but it's all based upon their efforts and not upon the effort. And with Jesus having died for the people, but even more important than the fact that he died is that he is alive right now today. That is because no one ever died and came back to life. Amen. Amen you know, to the people who believe in him and is still giving and had already made that sacrifice once and for all. Once and for all, all of the work that he did is completed. It's done. And now he just waits for the time when all of the people, all of the people that God has given to him will be gathered together before he returns and gives us all our reward. And that is just, that's wonderful. And it's foolishness to... Like the word said, it's foolishness to those who are perishing. They can't conceive of that. And the scripture, I, when you were talking about it, and it rang in my spirit all through. I kept waking up all night. And it was the Lord was saying, there is one God and one mediator between God and man. And I, um, I was thinking, okay, you know what, I'm, I'm just thinking because this little girl, is, she's very, very Catholic very Roman Catholic, and she posted a couple of prayers, and these prayers were to dead people to do whatever. And I'm like, and I just simply said, you know what, I can't agree with this prayer. I can't say amen to it because it goes against what my Bible says. And um, I know people have a lot of different Bibles, but I have a Catholic Bible. I used to have one. It's the New Jerusalem Bible. Their Bible says the same things I said. 
except the addition is the the books that we don't have, what we call the Apple Christ, but those other books from the Old Testament and uh, an extended version of some of the New Testament. But other than that, in their Bible, it doesn't say that they should pray to Peter or to Mary. or to, It doesn't say that in their Bible. It doesn't. But that's something that tradition have taught them. And this is something that because people are venerated and placed into a, 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 a status of sainthood and you can pray to them, which is why you have all of this. But they're false gods. They're idols. They're false gods who detract from the only mediator. My Bible says there is one God and one mediator between God and man. And even in Jesus' prayer, it says the same thing about eternal life. It's to know the one true God and the Christ that he sent. Only one. He didn't send anybody else. He sent him Amen. to redeem Amen. mankind. And the second scripture, oh, go ahead. Amen. And I was, I was thinking about this. That scripture was referring to uh, about the foolishness of preaching. Amen. It's in First Corinthians one eighteen. You know, to the world is foolishness. Uh, you know, but to us who believe unto the saving of our soul, the uh, preaching it, it, it seems foolishness to them that doesn't believe because they haven't been transformed in their minds to understand what the word of God is saying. But the scripture reads, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wise, the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise and where are the scribes? Where is the disputers of this world? Had not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world is by wisdom, knew not God. See, the world didn't even know God <laughs> through God's wisdom. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Amen. Praise God. See, God is so wise. The way we think, he's totally, praise God, the scripture tells us, and I think it's Isaiah 54, 54, 54, uh, or 55, it says, our, our thoughts are not his thoughts and our ways are not his ways. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He he's far above our our thoughts and our ways. My God. And that's mm -hmm. and that makes a lot of sense to me because he's so infinite in his wisdom. <laughs> we can't even comprehend the wisdom of God to such a degree. I would want someone to create me or I have to believe in someone on my equal. Right. <laughs> that wouldn't do me too much good. Because I wouldn't have much to come up to, would I? <laughs> but, oh, but the wisdom of God, hallelujah, and the knowledge of him and the immutability of God, he does not change. Immutability, praise God, is how you say it. Mm -hmm. He does not change. His character doesn't change. He has plans that he has made. He made covenants with us. He has plans for us. His prophecies doesn't change. The promises that he's made for us, it doesn't change. And we can see it through the scriptures, down through the tunnels of time. When God says something, he spoke it, he meant it. Now, he would plead with people and ask us to change our mind, and then he, we could touch him by changing. He, he's still pleading and asking us to repent and to change our ways. Praise God. Because he's a holy God. He's not going to come down to our level. We have to come up. Amen. We have to come up to his level. We have to. He has given everything to us. Hallelujah. He's given us everything. And he desires to give us all things. And all things is through him and by him. And we have to do it his way. Amen. Amen. That's true. That's true. That is true. And like you said, you know, no matter how highly we may think of ourselves as human beings, how smart and intelligent we are, and how, and I think what, I, I like the British word, how clever, when they say <laughs> something clever, you know, and when I hear the word clever, I think about that this person knows how to get things done, they can figure out anything, you know, I, when I heard that word, other than just saying, well, someone could be smart. 
but they may not be intelligent. And you have street smarts. You know what I'm saying? You have, you know, people who are have, are, have high IQs, but they have no common sense. You know, I think about all of these different things, but in my own self, I'm, I consider myself to be clever, but I understand what Paul said about counting it all as loss, as nothing, because of what God has revealed and what God has done. There is no way, although we do, we compare ourselves, and we really shouldn't. We should never compare ourselves to another person. The only thing that we should compare ourselves to is the mirror image of God. How close have I gotten to looking like that? That's the only thing. Because the more I time and effort I invest in my relationship with the Lord, the closer I am going to be look to looking like him, to acting like him, to thinking like him. And because the word tells us, let this mind be in you. Okay, if I have the mind of Christ, then I, I can learn to think like God. And his Amen. thoughts are so, uh, you know, it's like you can't comprehend. It's like, uh, why does he think like that? Why does he do that? Well, when you renew your mind, mm -hmm. when the mind of Christ is yours, you begin to think more like God. And Jesus being equal with God while he's showing us, okay, not that kind of complete perfection that he had with being God, but showing us, hey, this is, this is the way. This is the way that you can do this, and it is through me that you are able to live this way. It's through me, and we can't do anything outside of Christ, nothing. Everything that we try to do is automatically wrong because it's done in our own human nature, which according to God, is filthy rags, just like because that's our righteousness. Doesn't the word tell us that? Our righteousness is as filthy rags. Amen. So when we try mm -hmm. to come to God based on what we can do, it's completely unacceptable. And that's something that people don't understand today. And the scripture that I was thinking about, well, one of them is in uh, the, the block of uh, the passage that we read in, in Timothy all the time, the one about the mediator. But the Lord was telling me, he said that, we are, we are in the last days, right? And we know that. He said, but people will not, they will not listen to sound doctrine. They won't listen to it. They have taken whatever they wanted to take and twisted it. And it's that mixture, that mixture of uh, paganism. And what I was talking about, this young lady posting all this stuff. Well, they pray to anybody. Well, you've taken that and the word of God and mixed it together. That's, that's, that's still not right. It's not acceptable in God's eye. And it's still idolatry. Because anybody that comes between you and God, if it's not Jesus, it's an idol. It's a false God. Would you agree with that? Amen. Yes, I do agree with that. Amen. I told about this inscription that Paul had seen when he was in Ephesus. Until mm -hmm. they, they were serving other idols until the unknown God, and he introduced them to the the known God, Amen, the only God, Amen. And it's a lot of uh, things like that going on. People believe that they can get to a God several different ways, but there's only one true and living God, which is the God, Amen. So having Amen. a God is a is a fluke. But knowing the God is the real thing, amen, and that's what we want. We want the real, we have the real God, and we want others to know about the real God and, 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 and what Jesus has done and, and all that he is he's still doing, praise God. I like what you said. He's the only God that's still alive. <laughs> all these other sure. gods, quote, unquote, little G God. Right, and they're all man-made. They're man-made, you know, made with wood, stone, uh, crystal, whatever, marble, all of these different things. But you know, and then the the demon. You know, I I I I, I spent a lot of time in the '90s looking into other world religions just so I could get an understanding of what they believed and why they believed that. And I found that, like, 
them to just take care. And you know what? And I'm not afraid to, to just, just call a spade a spade because now today is the time when we cannot just sit by passively and allow people to be lost if we can at least speak into their lives. We at least have to tell them about the true and living God. We have to tell them about it. If they don't accept it, then that, that is on them. That is their choice and that is their right. But we have an obligation to the souls that are at stake because we were commissioned to spread the gospel, to share the message. And in Jesus' prayer, oh, my God, I see so much in there where he go and when he talks about, you know, that the world doesn't know him. You know, the world doesn't know the true God, you know, but inside every man, God did put them in the first chapter of Romans. Paul talks about how inside every man, God put that in us. When he created okay. man, it was part, that's part, that's our spirit. Our spirit longs to connect with God. But Amen. if you don't connect with the true and living God, you are going to connect with something. You're going to connect with something. You're going to go after something. And most of what people go after is something that speaks to them, to their life or to their, their personal and, and their deepest desires. And in the Hindu religion, they have three gods, three separate gods. And they're, you know, you've seen pictures of them with their blue, with, and some of them have many arms. I mean, these are the three main gods. There are a lot of other gods and goddesses, you know, but they're all the apparitions. And people talk about, well, how did you come up with this? Well, they had a dream, and they were, had a visitation from a demon who revealed themselves to them, and this is how horrible and terrifying that they look. But God doesn't want us to be terrified and afraid of us. In that sense, the fear of God is the respect and admiration for the living God. It's not to be so terrified of him that, you know, you'll just follow him because you're afraid of him. But no, because when you come into God's presence, how can you not feel his love? How can you not feel his love for you? And mm -hmm. reaching enlightenment like the Buddhists do, but that's their ultimate thing. If they want to reach enlightenment, okay, well, they have to study and, you know, sacrifice and, you know, fast and live, you know, live basic lives with almost nothing. And, you know, but God is not requiring that of us. He, he's a generous and loving God who wants us to have the best, but he doesn't want us to destroy ourselves by being consumed with the thought of having everything that's available to us. Because like Paul says, all things, you know, he can have all things, but all things are not good for me. Amen. And we need to understand that a, a truly loving and merciful God will not want us to have something that's going to ultimately destroy us. Exactly. Exactly. I thank I thank God for that, y'all. As you was uh, referring to uh, Paul and what he was saying, he called those things but dung for the excellency of the knowledge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All Paul had, Paul was very very astute in the uh, in the, in the uh, Word of God mm -hmm. and and in the different uh, you know the high uh, excellence of knowledge in the the the, the um, Sanhedrin co uh, council and all of these things, but when once he was knocked off his beast and he thought he knew God and he said, "Who art thou, Lord? Who cru who art thou, Lord?" And when God told him who he who, who who he was, and then he asked, you know, he asked questions. I'm telling you, it's something. How we can even look at that? As I was talking, I'm I'm thinking we can even look at that. How he thought he knew God. Mm -hmm. But when God, when he had an encounter with God, he had to ask, who are, who are thou, Lord? And my God, and it's hard, God told, it's hard to kick against the pricks. <laughs> mm -hmm. When we come to, into an encounter, and I think, praise God, that's a good prayer too, that people would have an encounter with the true and living God. When God gives you an, an encounter, <laughs> you are for sure enough, resolved in knowing that you know the true and living God because he does it in such a way that you have no doubt that he's God, amen, 
But I know he he chose Paul, and that happened because of uh, the calling that he had on his life. But boy, wouldn't that be amazing for uh, for people to have an encounter with God and to and, and to ask that question: Who are thou? Who are thou? And get to know the true and living God, because God is calling for. Uh, Soldiers in the army, in his army, he's calling for souls, uh, uh, men and women of of God to just love him and to be obedient. God is calling for family. He gave up his, his throne. Jesus gave up. Uh, God sent Jesus, and Jesus came down, gave up for a while his, his, where he was living with the Father in heaven to come down to earth. And, boy, just to think about something like that, who would give up? <laughs> Who would get? Wh- which one of us would give up all to to gain the whole world? He 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 did that to gain the whole world, knowing that everyone is not going to accept him. But for those who will accept him, it still was worth him coming down. Hallelujah, mm-hmm. Hallelujah for mankind, mm-hmm. because God the Father wants a family, and that's what He's always wanted. He wants to be loved. The same things we desire, God desires. He desired them first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How you look at that? He designed it first to have a, mm-hmm. a family, a holy family. Hallelujah. People that love him and will obey. But he gave man a choice. Isn't that something? He's still giving us. We still have a choice in this right, matter right. To, to choose. Right. Rather or not, we're going to obey him. He's, he's such a loving God that he's still even though mankind has turned from God, God still because He can't change. That's that's another fa- oh, well, That's another factor. He can't change. He's who He is. No matter what right. we do, He cannot change. He is steadfast. Right. Right. So that shows us that His love is not. It's not predicated on whether we love Him back. True. Oh it's my! Not, his love is oh, not oh, conditional. Oh, oh, oh. It's not conditional. It's unconditional. When I was talking and I was hearing what I was saying, it made me even think even more about how loving of a God we have, that it, no matter what we do or don't do, he still loves us. Right. But it, so, but, it, but, it, but it makes us want to love him more and please him because we know that we are loved to such a degree. Mm. Praise you, Jesus. So true. And God is I would you know, just with, with thinking about there are things that God has available for us, yes, that is conditional, but his love is unconditional because he's already proven his love. And there's a lot of times people will quote John three sixteen. It's like, okay, we quote that, but do you really understand what that's saying? And I mean, I quoted it, and people will say, well, what's your favorite scripture? And a lot of people will quote, say John three sixteen, and that was not a, a scripture that I would pick as my favorite scripture because, and I I, I would think about it, and it's like, well, you know, I don't know, uh, but at a time. I didn't understand what that scripture really meant. And as you're talking about, uh, you mentioned the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Okay, so before God even created the earth, Jesus had already been slain. The plan was already in motion. And if I look at it from that perspective, I can say God loved us so much that mm-hmm. he gave him before he even created us. Oh, uh, right now. He even mm. created us. He, Jesus, gave his life and shed his blood so that we could be redeemed, so that we could be brought back. That price, and I, I, the Lord talked to me before about value. He said, we don't value people, his people. We don't really value ourselves the way we should mm. because your value is determined by the price that somebody would pay. Wow. And the wow. price that Jesus paid was his life and his life's blood. That's the price. So, And God valued Jesus over everyone. So if he gave his son, and Jesus said, okay, John goes on to say, well, before that he said that the word became flesh. 
So in the beginning, God was, but in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. So God took a part of himself and gave it up for us. That's how much he loved mm-hmm. us. Because there was mm-hmm. nobody else that could ever, no one could do it. There weren't any angels who could do it. And there was not going to be a human being born of man that could do it. So he had to give up himself. That's how much mm-hmm. he loved us was to give up. And here's the thing that Jesus has to take on that form of a human male, of a Jew, of the Jewish people for all of eternity. He can never go back to what he was, ever. And when I look at, and Jesus said, because here in his prayer, have, do we pay attention to what he says um, in verse 24, Father, I desire that they also whom you have given to me as your gift to me may be with me where I am so that they may see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Mm-hmm. What he said, Jesus talked about the glory that he had with the Father before any of mm-hmm. this happened. He, and he can't ever go back because we know that Jesus is the word come fl- made flesh. John tells us in chapter 3 that Jesus is the Word made flesh. Uh, I mean, chapter 1. So if we know that he was the Word made flesh, he, that can never be reversed. Look at what he gave up. So when I, as I'm thinking about it, he gave up more than just his life as a human male. He yeah. gave up more than that. He gave up that position of being, being in God. Because he said, I and my Father are one. But now he has a form that can never be changed because of his love for us. Would we be willing to do something like that? Mm. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we're, I mean, you know, just, just, the, just the thought of him dying, suffering, all of those things that he had to suffer, you know, the, the ridicule, you know, and, and we don't even get into exactly what happened during the, you know, during the time he went to the Sanhedrin. Well, how they beat him upside the head with rods mm-hmm. and pulled out his beard and, and spat on him and slapped him. And, you know, all of this stuff that they did to him. Okay, that was nothing compared to what he gave up just to even put himself in that position. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's what I said. How could we not serve a God who has given up? So much for us. He gave up his rightful place. He gave up a part of who he was for us. And we're so ungrateful. We're mm-hmm. so ungrateful. We're so yeah. disobedient. I mean, even when we, we, we now as mature women of God, we can look back on our lives, and there were so many times while we, we, we professed Christ and while we, we loved him as much as we thought we could or knew, but we can, I can look back in my life and say, oh, Lord, wow, I did mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. I was so wrong with that. You know, Me too. But Me too. If, we, <laughs> if we get that understanding, and this is what mm-hmm. I believe the Lord really wants us to convey to the people, because you know what? I don't want people to make the same mistakes I made. I don't want Amen. them to struggle and like Paul, uh, when, he, when he was still Saul, it's kind of kicking against the pricks. And Saul was very intelligent. Like you said, Gamaliel was part of the Sanhedrin, and he was his mentor, his, his teacher. So Paul knew the law backwards and forwards. You know, he knew the word. But what I love about that encounter on the Damascus Road is when the light shone brightly around him and he heard the voice like thunder, and he fell to his knees. He knew what he said. Who are you, Lord? He knew that this was a, this was God. He knew that it was a power yes. beyond anything he had ever encountered before. So he acknowledged that this is this is all. Who are you, Lord? Who are you? You know, if it was an angel or whatever it was that had done this, but he knew that it was a power beyond anything he'd ever known. Amen. Right off the bat, and we don't, That's you know. People don't do that. Well, you know what? The reason they don't do it because there's no demonstration of power. Hello, let me just say that. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had to catch myself. I was like, well, they ain't seen no power. How do you go? How do you go? No, fall to their knees and you know, say, acknowledge that this is the Lord or something. No, they ain't haven't seen any of that. 
you know, but um, those days are changing. You know, God is putting people, raising people up into that position where they, if if you will walk upright according to what God leads you and directs you and speak the word, the Holy Spirit backs us up. The Holy Spirit is that power that demonstrates the authority of God as we speak it. He will back up, what, but because nobody's had any authority in their life, that's why he hasn't been. He wasn't there. He wasn't nowhere around. But now is that time. Yeah, God want to show Himself mighty through His people, and even in that prayer, you know, as Jesus was praying, just praying that uh, that we would be made one in mm-hmm. Him. Praise God, and we know by the Spirit of God we can come together. By his spirit, we may not all come together collectively in one place, Mm -hmm. but if we're being led by the spirit of God, we can all have the mind of Christ and have the mind of God, and he can still direct us however he chooses to direct the body of Christ. Right. When the early church was persecuted, that's how the word of God was spread abroad. And we know that persecution... It's going on in places, but we haven't experienced it. Like, I know we probably will experience persecution. Mm-hmm. And the grace of God, we we need to be, be ready, not get ready. We need to be ready because we have to realize that history does repeat itself, and we need to be ready to not just live for God, but be willing to, to die for what we believe, praise God. Right. Because that's what Jesus did. He lived and died and lived, yet lives forever, which we will also. We, we, we may die. This fleshly body may die, but our spiritual being is going to live forever and ever. Amen. That's the plus side of living for God, the true and living God. We'll never die. <laughs> we will never die. That's true. We'll never die of physical death to the end (laughs) because our spirit will live on forever and ever. And we will be given glorified bodies. Ooh, just to think about that. (laughs) Glorified bodies. God is going to give us bodies, glorified bodies. (laughs) (laughs) We need to look at these things and think. We look at the things that we have been promised. And hold on to these things dearly, mm-hmm. and we can. It, it gives us a, a, our hope is so. It's a sure foundation of hope. We know that God is real, and we know that He said what He says He means, and what He means He says, mm-hmm. and everything He says will come to pass. So we believe the word of God. Hallelujah. We believe the word of God. Hallelujah. We can hold on to these things, precious promises. Hallelujah. And say, Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your love today. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you for the fun. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Move every hindrance, every obstacle, oh God. Let your word go forth, oh God. Hallelujah. In the boldness and the power of the Spirit, hallelujah. Propelling in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Propelling and calling those, hallelujah, that you can call. According to your name, for your faith, your hallelujah. Let your will yes. be done, O oh God. 
trying to be friends with the world, but all the lobo say take care, ya basata, because the scripture says the friend of the world is the enemy of God. Hallelujah. Lord. We have to be bold. Hallelujah. And bold and believe and speak what we we know, what thus says the Lord. Hallelujah. It's the only way. Hallelujah. He's the only way. He is the only way to eternal salvation. Jesus is the only way. Hallelujah. There is no other way. He is the door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you try to come in any other way, it's a thief and a robber because Jesus is the door and you can't go in no other kind of way. He is the door. He's the doorway to eternal life. Beloved, Jesus is the doorway. Hallelujah. He's the door. Hallelujah. And he is the way to eternal life. Hallelujah. There is no other way. There is no other way. I I speak and I say there is no other way. Way. Hallelujah. He is the only way. The only way. The only true and living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That your soul may live on forever and ever. Hallelujah. Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You are so good. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. I was reminded of what I learned last week about knocking. You know, Jesus is not timidly knocking at the door. 
It says it's banging with a stick. You know, you can't ignore. Ooh. How long will you ignore the knocking of the Lord at your heart? For those who, and, and he's speaking to the church. He's not speaking to the world. He's speaking to the church. He's knocking. Amen. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. So he's Come banging on. on the door. So how can you say God is not speaking to you? God is not communicating you. Well, open the door. Open the door and let him in. And Amen. then fulfill the, his plans and purposes for your life. Hallelujah. Ooh. Time is growing Ooh. short. And many Ooh. people Ooh. are leaving this earth. And they're leaving. People say prematurely, no, they're leaving because they refuse the true and living God. They refuse Amen. it. So the enemy, when you refuse the true and living God, you open the door for the enemy. Or worst case scenario is the enemy is already inside with you. Come on. And if you won't and open the door, then he cannot be expelled. Mm. Because you've got to let Jesus in in order to dispel the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, and we know the scripture tells us that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. That's his ultimate goal is to destroy all mankind. But believers. Yeah, the destruction. Yeah. We, that, go ahead. But Believers, when we open the door and, and we, it, we we don't allow the the Holy Spirit, we don't be, allow Jesus to come in fully into every room and in every area of our life, we are, uh, we are allowing the enemy to come in, hallelujah, to work havoc. We cannot have two, we can't serve two masters. We're going to hate mm-hmm. one and hold to the other. That's the scripture. Yeah, we can't serve God and Mama. We have to have one, one, and Jesus is that one. Hallelujah. He's that one. And we need to open up our hearts and open up the door to our lives in every area and allow him to come in every room. We can't have a, a one door shut and say, no, <laughs> this is my pet pee. You can't go in that room. He, he, mm-hmm. he, he is Lord. He wants to be Lord, in other words. He wants to be Lord of all, all of our life. In every area of our life, we can't uh, compartmentalize our life in Christ. We cannot do that. He's going to be Lord of all or not Lord at all. (laughs) That's what he wants to be. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. There's so many different things that, you know, people will say, you know, they'll give God part, partial access. And when the Lord talks to us about these that we need to, you know, get rid of, and then he begins to shake, you know, us and the things in our lives, because if a, if the apple, because you've got people who go, you know, in the apple orchards, the fruit orchards, they don't pick the ones that fell on the ground. They pick the ones that are still on the tree. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and they say, well, you know, I look at the ones that fell on the ground. I said, well, they look all right. They, I mean, they look just like the ones on the tree, but why did it fall to the ground? Why didn't it stay on the tree? Was it overripe? And, and I mean, those people who know about, you know, the orchards and things like that, but you don't see people picking them up off the ground, no matter how good they look. They always <laughs> pick them off the tree. There's a reason for that. Jesus said in John 14, well, when we go from 14 to 15 and 16, he's talking about the Holy Spirit, all about the Holy Spirit, his coming, what's he going to do for you, how he enables us how he empowers us, how he backs us up. The authority that Jesus delegated to us is manifested through the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But he said, Jesus tells us that we have to abide in the vine. Amen. He's the vine, we're the branches. And he said, but a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it remains in the vine. So the, the fruit that we bear it's only because we are with him, but the sap that runs through the vine to the branch that helps to create and nourish the fruit is the Holy Spirit. Praise God. 
And then God is the husband, and well, God is the vineyard owner. He's the one who plucks the fruit, the fruit. <laughs> or prunes us so that we can produce more fruit. And it's like, well, you're supposed to like, no, I'm going to prune you. Not because, well, he'll prune our dead branches. Yeah, okay. Those branches dead, gone. Okay, that branch ain't no, you know, it's like, no, nope, they're not producing any fruit. Bloop, off you go. And the ones that are producing fruit, he'll prune them so they can produce even more fruit. More fruit. And the pruning uh-huh. is not as pleasant. <laughs> It's not pleasant, but when you begin to be pruned and you begin to produce more fruit, the fruit is for somebody else. It's not for you. Mm-hmm. The vine doesn't mm-hmm. produce branches to produce fruit for it to just stay there and look pretty and say, oh, look at me. No, the fruit is produced for someone else. But we have to have fruit that remains, which is why when I was thinking about the apple trees, the fruit has to remain on the branch in order for it to be useful. If it falls to the ground, it's of no good. The nutrients is not there, right? Mm -hmm. The life that flows through the vine, praise God, is no longer there. And that, that, that is so important. We need to abide and remain on the vine mm-hmm. to stay. Amen. We're the branches that needs. We need the nourishment of the vine. Amen. To the life of Christ to flow in and through us in order for us to bring forth fruit. Amen. And to remain fruitful, we have mm-hmm. to abide in the vine. Amen. Mm-hmm. Because without Him, we can't do nothing. Not a thing mm-hmm. can we do without Him. Not a thing. My God, because the life is in him, and as his his life flows through in and through us, we can give life because we have life flowing in and through us. But once we don't have life flowing in and through us, if we disconnect ourselves from the vine, from the from the branch, and we fall to the ground like that 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 fruit you're talking about, mm-hmm. it's no it's it's not fruitful anymore. What what is it good for? That's why people pick from the branch. They want the the, the, the nutrition, the nourishment that that vine, that the, that that fruit gives. When they pick that off the tree and they they bite into that fruit, mmm, that fruit is still alive. They picked it out of, from the vine off the tree, <laughs> but the one that <laughs> fell to the ground, <laughs> nobody don't want anything dead. <laughs> We want the best. We want the best. In order to be, have the best, we have to be the best. We need to abide in the vine. We need to abide, abide, and allow the husbandman, which is Christ. He, he's the vine, the father. The father is the husbandman. Jesus is the vine. Amen. <laughs> oh, Lord, and we are the branches, and we need to bear some fruit. He is calling mm-hmm. us to bear forth fruit, amen, in his kingdom. Right. Amen. And that the fruit will remain. Fruit that remains. Fruit that remains. Yes. Fruit that remains. And as we look at that, when we produce fruit, we produce fruit. Others, and, and you know what, and here's another thing, the fruit of our laborers, those people who have believed the message that you, that you give, you get a lot of people and they come down to the altar or they confess Christ, they accept Christ, they don't, they don't remain. They, you know, a couple trials or whatever comes up and they're gone. The fruit that remains is the fruit that, that lasts, that endures, that holds on. Even when the winds come and shake the tree, shake the vine, are they falling off? All of these different parables that the Lord told us about the sword, you're sowing seeds and, you know, you're sowing the word of God, but where is it falling on? And we we do, when we're praying for people and for their salvation, we need to, we need to not only pray for their salvation, but we need to pray for the condition of their heart. We need to, we know mm-hmm. that they can't come unless the Holy Spirit draws them, and only God can change the heart of a person. But we don't want, and let me just say this, mm. I don't want to spend a lot of time 
teaching and preaching to someone who the hand of God is not calling them. All right. I'm, I'm not wasting my time, and we need to discern. We need to listen. And years ago, when I was in St. Louis, and the church I was going to, they um, we used to go out witnessing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. One Saturday a month, uh, like I, I, it was like the third Saturday, something like that. I don't remember exactly what Saturday, but it was once a month. We'd all go down to the church, and then we would go to a neighborhood, and we would witness. Well, what witnessing consisted of was going and knocking on their door and inviting them to come to our church, handing them a program, <laughs> our church name. I mean, really, that that's what it was. And mm -hmm. um randomly asking people to come. Now, I was with, you know, whoever I was with, and I don't know what the pastor did, whether he prayed for people. I don't really know. But what we did was, what we're, what we're supposed to do, we were going to invite them to come to our church. Okay. So one time, one time I went with uh, a lady, Evangelist Young, and she she was she was very gifted. And she had a, you know, she operated in the spirit, and she had a uh, gift of prophecy and word of knowledge, you know, all of that stuff that people are drawn to. And everybody, when she was going to preach, oh, you're talking about folks being there. She, they they, they okay. would be there when Barbara <laughs> Young was preaching, you know. Because, I mean, not only that, because they, they could get a word from God, but girlfriend didn't play. She mm -hmm. let it out. See, every cat came out of the bag screaming and scratching when she when she got up and did the word of God. So it wasn't just, you know, and some of the stuff that, you know, when the word that God would give her for people wasn't always, oh, everything's wonderful and you're going to get this car and this job. It's like, no, you're doing wrong. You need to get it right. So I, I saw that. And mm -hmm. she asked me one day, uh, she said, uh, I, I, you know what, we went, we finished whatever area. She said, I'm the Lord want me to go over somewhere else, wherever. You want to go with me? She invited me. I was like, yeah. Oh, like, sure, I went. She went to this grocery store in an area I had never been in. Um, and um, she went to the store. I had my little tracks, and I was running people down in the parking lot, you know, running them down and inviting them to the church. And those people who didn't want to take the flyer or listen to me. Of course, I wasn't exactly, you know, pleased with them. You know, hmm, you don't even want to know about God, and, you know. <laughs> and I, I would watch her, and she was standing at the door, the entrance door. She didn't go in the store. And one person came out. I mean, people came and went, and she was still standing there. And I was kind of, you know, watching her, you know, to see what was going on. And then one person came out. And she talked to him, talked to him for a while, and I'm still running folks down in the parking lot. And then they went on their way, and then she <laughs> waited some more, and then somebody else came out, and she talked to them. And after she talked to the second person, she said, you know, it's okay, it's time to go. And I got in the car, and, you know, and we were going back, you know, and I said, well, Sister Young, I said, you, you, you didn't talk to nobody but two people. I thought we came over here to witness. <laughs> <laughs> and she told me, she told me the Lord had sent her there to talk to those two people. She just told me he had sent her there, and I was like, "Well, how you know did he tell you, you know who they were or whatever?" She said, "No, but when they came along, she explained to me how when those two individual people came out of the store, she knew that they were the ones individually that she needed to, to talk to, to what the Lord had for them." And I, that stuck with me for years, and I just couldn't understand how that worked. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. people randomly, you know, you're on the street, people randomly will hand you a track. You know, and it's like they just try to give them to anybody. They have no discernment or anything That's as right. to who really needs the track. They just try to hand them out to everybody. Mm -hmm. And I thought about that. The Lord brought that up one time when I was doing the blogging. And I wrote about, you know, somebody handed me a track on the street. And I got, sometimes I won't accept the track. If I don't feel, I mean, some of them I won't even, I won't even accept. There's something wrong when the Holy Spirit will say no. I won't even take it. And mm -hmm. but when you tell someone no, they react like I did back way back in the day. I, you know, I don't you want to, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was saying, I understand yeah. <laughs> what you mean. They're like, don't, 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 don't you want to know about Jesus? You know, don't you want to be saved and, you know, all of this kind of stuff? Well, you're going to hell. And, you know, I didn't tell everybody they was going to hell. 
you know, but it's like, well, don't you want to know about Jesus? Don't you want to be saved or whatever? And I, but that stuck with me because now, I mean, I've been out with people, and when the Lord would say, speak to this person or talk to this person or that person, then I have. Now, before we started having to wear the mask, it's hard to talk to those masks, at least my man. It's so tight, the only one I got. And I don't really want, I, don't, I didn't want that one, but since I have to wear it in the store, you know, when I go, have to go to talk to somebody, I have to pull it down. <laughs> I have it off my nose anyway. But before then, when other people were wearing their masks, and I encountered some other people, and I began, and the Lord had me saying, you know, talking to them and things like that. But if we're not listening and in tune with what the Holy Spirit is saying, just randomly trying to hand somebody a track, and it's like, I'm not really interested in giving out a track anyway. If you're if you're receptive and open, right then and there, we're gonna pray. We're gonna share. I'm gonna share with you. We're gonna do this right now. I'm not gonna wait for you to go home and may or may not read this piece of paper I handed it to you. Because if the Holy Spirit leads me or leads any of us to talk to someone, there's a reason for that. Amen. And we just need to be obedient to it. We need to be open and we need to be obedient and not be concerned about what the people around are saying. And it's like y'all were telling the story about the man in the grocery store with the gloves. He got on his glove and his mask. Hello, what, what else you want? Half mask suit? What else do you want? <laughs> and I t- I've seen some people before, you know, before the lockdown, they were all, and I said, oh, they had matters up. And they're like, what I say? They covered from head to toe. And then one lady did literally have a hood on. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not trying to be funny, but I know that everybody has their own level of, of faith and fear. I said, but you know what? If you're not in faith and you are in fear, there is no middle ground. That's, that's true. you either one or the other. Mm-hmm. And I One saw a post on Facebook, and I didn't read it. I didn't listen to the message or whatever by whoever it was. And the, uh, but because the the title was offensive to me, and he said uh, in the title it said people uh, mask. Uh, if you don't wear a mask, are you selfish? Right or <laughs> selfish? It's like no. I was like no. You know. And I wrote on there. I said I'm not, I'm I'm a uh, not a mask wearer. But the word selfish is, I said, but you can call me anything you want because I'm not wearing the mask, you know. But it's like selfish. I mean, it's like how how do you even come up with that concept? And if you're, uh, you know, if you're speaking, you're a preacher. How can you even put that in your title if you don't wear a mask or you write or selfish? How is selfish anywhere in that equation where you're supposed to speak for God? I found the title offensive. I did. And I just said, no, I'm I'm not going to listen to this. I'm not going to read this article because, you know what, this is it. And if that's the case, then that's fine. You can call me whatever you want to call me. But I know that unless I absolutely have to. And I sit out here and look out my window, and I'm seeing people walking to take the trash out with their mask on. (laughs) Well, I'm like my husband. We believe that the Lord... uh, you know, and I know a lot of people say, well, everybody believes that. But my belief, what you believe is what you believe, what I believe. I believe the Word of God, and I believe that we're under his protection. Mm-hmm. And uh, now they have placed it here where we have to wear a mask when in public. Yeah, so mm-hmm. they have that here. Now. We haven't started on yesterday. We haven't been out yet. And, um, Wait a minute, in public, period, or just when you go to the store? When you go in to public. the store. In public, yeah, okay. you know, when you're around people, uh, you know, yeah, because when we go outside, we don't wear masks. Well, but uh, we go ahead. But when we, you know, when we go out, we haven't been out yet because it started yesterday, man, the mandate. But when we go out to, uh, like, to the store and stuff, we're supposed to have on a mask. And right. I told him that doesn't. I told him that doesn't take anything from me. I, that's what I told him. I still believe what I believe. Right. I'll do this because this is what. They mandated, but when I had a choice, I had a choice. I would wear one because right. I know what I believe. But right. uh, and I, baby, I said, because as soon as I come out, I'm gonna take it off. I'm not gonna wear it just, you know, because I'm walking outside. 
Right. But I'll wear it if I'm among people inside of, you know, of, 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 of a business because right. that's their mandate. Right. But I say, baby, that doesn't take anything from what I believe. You know what I'm saying? I still believe the Lord, and I believe he's going to keep us. Right. You can wear a mask and still get a, a COVID, you know what I'm right. saying? Because uh, we say it's airborne. That's just like the flu is airborne. Right. You, you, you don't wear a mask for the flu. <laughs> if it's in the air and it's airborne, you can get it. I know. And, 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 but, but, okay, if it's airborne and it's on surfaces, so potentially um, everybody, okay, if the employees are using gloves to stop, okay, if, they, if it's on any of the stuff that they are handling, they're just transferring it to everything that they touch. That's the way That's I look true. at it. And that now, you know, the grocery stores used to have somebody stationed to wipe down all the carts and stuff. They don't do that anymore. Unless right. they're out because they got the head a little sanitary wipes. And I used to always get the wipes. I got the wipes all the time, way before this. You know, and, and, and if I went to a place they didn't have wipes, I'd be mad. You know, because I don't know what's on that cart. You know, and I'm thinking it's like because you know you got to touch your food and things like that. And I'm not always gonna come in and wash my, you know, produce and stuff. All I, I'm not gonna lie, I don't always do that. But I used to be. I mean, as far as the as fit cold and flu seeds and different things, but things that you absolutely know were transmitted through, you know, the touching. You know, people hands and some people are just nasty. That's just them just say it the way it is, that's the truth. They just nasty. And I won't say cooties. I don't. You know. Don't know right. God has protected me, but also, you know what? I'm not trying to put God to the test. Just like Jesus is not now for not gonna jump off this ledge and put him to the test. No. They said, I know that I need to do. There's a reason why they had the little sandy wipes there, but of course they ran out of them because people probably still know about the thing too, you know, when they could have gotten a lot of them. But mm -hmm. now they don't do them. And so when I go in the store and I look, the first thing I look to see if they're there, if they're there, I grab them and wipe the basket, you know, and go on about my business. But I'm seeing people who are coming in with their masks on, and they're assuming that the carts are wiped down. See, that's an assumption. They're assuming that's that the carts are wiped down. So if there's something on that cart, then they're not protected from it. And when I get ready to go in the store, because there's an outside part when, you know, you get your cart, I'm walking up and I get my, bat, my mask ready. And when I get my cart ready, then I'll put the mask on and before I enter the door. And I've had people mm -hmm. looking crazy at me. I'm like, don't try me. Because I have that sign right there that said I can't enter this store without the mask. This is not the store. And, I, you know, but I've noticed that. And this is something that I noticed from the beginning when people were wearing their masks. The CDC had instituted the six-foot protocol. Those people who were wearing masks back then, they never obeyed that. They walked right up to you, right up to you, right behind you, right beside you, or reach over you and all this other kind of stuff because they had their masks on and they thought that they were protected from whatever I had because I wasn't wearing the mask. It's like, no. The other way, it's the other way around, sweetheart. I'm already protected whether I wear a mask or not. <laughs> and now I, I, I'm seeing the same thing, and they're constantly announcing in the store to keep six feet different. And people still walk right up to you. And I think we were in Burlington uh, about a month or so ago, and my daughter was looking for some kind of shorts that she could wear uh, for school because, you know, in the summertime they can wear like uh, capri link pants and stuff like that. Um, and this woman, and she was she was a Muslim woman because she was all robed up, and she kept coming. I mean, she was literally right at almost touching my shoulder. I could feel the body heat from her. And she just kept coming right up, right up beside me. And I had told my daughter I was getting tired of these people with their masks on, tripping like that. And mm -hmm. at some point, I was going to say something. And I turned around and I told her, "Excuse me, but you need to move." And I put my hand out, and she stepped back, back, and I spread my, pushed my hand all the way out. I said, "You mm -hmm. need to back up." <laughs> yeah, my. And she face. looked at me. She looked at me, and she blinked. And you know what? She, I didn't care whether she spoke English or not. 
But she moved back, and then she went over there and talked to her little friend, and they jabbered along, and I'm like, fine, whatever. I said, because it's not about the virus thing, but I don't want nobody in my space. Like, I don't know. I don't want you that close to me. I've been like that most of my life. <laughs> and I'm still like that. I'm not, you know, I'm, I, I don't like people. It's people I don't know don't touch me. And there's a lot of people I do know don't touch me. And people know that. And they'll ask me, can I hug you? Yeah, that's right. You know you need, you know me. You know, if you ask me, then you know me well enough to know you need to ask. You can't just come up and put your hands on me. And, but I told, I had said, I was so tired of these people doing that. You know, you got on your mask. I'm not wearing a mask, but you just don't come right next to me and reach all over me and all of this other kind of stuff. And, you know, my own daughter, daughter didn't even stand that close to me. <laughs> and that's my child, and I love her. She's not even that close to me. So why are you a complete and total stranger all up on me? I can, I can feel your hot breath on my neck. I can feel your body heat. You're so close, you know. And I say that because people don't have respect and this is the whole point. People don't have respect. And the, the thing about the pandemic, it has just brought all of these issues to the surface. Whatever underlying conditions people had, it's just brought it to the surface. And mm -hmm. it's just come out. And for us to have to deal with, and I said, well, I've been like this all my life. So, you know. I have now, I, a few people, like I said, I'm just telling them, excuse me, do you mind? <laughs> mm -hmm. And if I have to remind them, you know, you got your gloves and stuff on, I, I'm not mad at you for that. But the rule is that you stay six feet away from me. Now, if I need to get to something and somebody is standing there, I'll wait until they get done. I'm not in any yeah. work. I'll just wait until mm -hmm. they get done. I'm trying to obey the rules that I'm constantly hearing overhead, you know, we're not to say six feet apart, blah, 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 mm -hmm. you know, whatever. You know, and before mm -hmm. the mask became mandatory, now we were, we went to the movies Friday night. And we were, after the movie was over, we were outside. No, when we were in the movie, we went in the snack line, and here was a family. Not one of those parents corrected their children because they had little lines on the floor, little X's where you're supposed to stand at. They were all up next to my daughter because I was in the front and because uh, she was paying. So I moved up to the front to get my popcorn and my drink. And so she was at the X by the register where they paid at. And then there was another family. The, the mother was at the other ex. The father was next to her, and the two kids were coming on up to where my daughter was. No, and they didn't say a word to them, and they didn't have on masks at the time. They didn't have on any masks. They didn't correct them. And see, I would have turned around and said, excuse me. They require you to wear a mask in here. I'm like, I got to put on a mask. All y'all, <laughs> I'm like, all y'all got to put on one, and you need to get over there behind that edge. <laughs> I'm serious. And I'm like, if you're going to do it, I'm going to go out and not trying to be rude to people. It's like, but you know what? This is what you need to do. And they tell you, you know, your kids are at risk. This is what they, 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 they spreading all these lies about. And I mean lies because they're just, it's fear. They promote fear by telling you if you if you did over this age, if you have this, if right, you have right. this, and you have that, then you're at risk. Well, I say we need to not only be praying for the COVID-19, but we need to be praying for these people with these underlying conditions as well. Amen. Because those Amen. people will be more afraid than anyone because, well, I'm over 65, you know, and I have this, 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 and that, you know, so... I'm at a higher risk. This is the lie that they're telling them, which only promotes fear. It's right. not, it, and right. that is exactly what it's designed to do. Yeah, yeah, I do. I realize that it, it does. And you know, you know, you, you have to be. That's what I'm saying. When in times like these, we are in some trying times. We better know who we believe. We better know who to put our trust in, and what to mm -hmm. put our trust in. Because we, we, we'll be panicking, too. And I, I refuse to panic because oh, yeah. I trust God. I refuse to p panic. Amen. And like I said, I told baby, I'm saying, I'm not saying this going to happen. I said, but, uh, you know, we fight to stay here. 
But I said, it's it's not a bad trade off. <laughs> you know, I want to be here to finish my course to do what God called me to do. But uh, mm-hmm. people 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 are crazy, and um, and if you notice in some places too, they they're arguing with people that that if, if they didn't have on a mask. Yeah, there are people who uh, they refuse to. Uh, you know, you can't go into a business be. And not have on a mask, you know. And if the business requires you to wear a mask, and either you don't shop there or you That's put on right. a mask. It, I mean, it, it right. really is just that simple. And I saw a little of my niece post or something, and it started off about that. And then it got down to where it got it got ugly. The 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 little the little sign the woman would had. It didn't just stop with you know you you know you need to wear the mask. It started talking about you know. Some people who, you know, clown because they have to wear a mask. Well, you know, that really is that simple. But I said I've been in places where the employees need to check themselves because they said some stuff that was completely out of line, completely out of line to people who, because like over here at this program we go in, there's only, you can only go in one door. you in and out the same door. Is that social distancing? No. As it, as it stands, because they have the self-checkouts right there where the entrance doors are, people get their basket and they come in the outdoor all the time. They do that anytime, but when after a certain time of night, they block off the other entrance, so you have to come in one door. And so you got then you have a big sign they, where they blocked off. And I, I can understand if you got people checking out, you don't want people coming in in that same area. It's like, but y'all, there needs to be a better way because now you have the social distancing thing. You have the people who are coming in with their carts, and you have the people going out all in one door. And you block off this so instead of uh, somebody being able to just come in and go, you know, to the right, if they want to go to the bakery or, you know, the cheese or whatever, now they have to go all the way around the store, all the way around all the checkouts into the produce section and then come back and go, you know, shopping after 8 o'clock at night. And they don't close to 1, but they start locking it off at 8. And... I told the little girl, y'all need to do better. You know, you y'all need y'all blocked off this and now I have to go way around the store to come in here, you know, and she said something smart and I'm like, see, see, that's that 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 right there. I went on about my business. I was like, uh uh-uh, uh, no, because we're not gonna stop here. And then when I got ready to leave the store, you know how when people call themselves being nice, nasty, well you have a good gay man. <laughs> well, and I'm know, like, you know, how come you can't just leave stuff alone, you know? And see, I could have been one of those people who would have went completely off. Well, I thank God you did. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, I could have been. I just told her, yes, ma'am. I said, you have a good night too, sweetheart. And I went on out the door. And I knew when she said it, why she said it. Right. You know, and they say, but see, she she going to say something like that to somebody that don't have Christ and somebody who don't care whether they got Christ or not. And I used to Come be on. one of those people who I might not care. You know, don't, you know, and but then, see, that was one of the, the issues that the Lord was dealing with me on about my peace, the internal issue of that irritation that I was feeling with people in customer service type positions not doing their job properly. And for her to come back and say that, that was, you know, that, that, that was the enemy trying to antagonize me. But see, the God had already told me, you will allow an external force to uh, interrupt your internal peace. That peace I gave you, that's on the inside, and it comes from the inside out, not from the outside in. So when you let something on the outside disrupt that, you I mean, actually, that's coming between me and him. I Once I got yes, to understand this, and here there was a physical, <laughs> not over the phone kind of deal, or, I mean, this was something that happened after he had explained that to me, and I got, okay, Lord, I got you, I got you. 
So I'm the I have and I know I have control over that, but I don't have no control over what people say and do. I only have control mm-hmm. over me. That's right. So mm-hmm. I walked out the door and I didn't I didn't you know just and I said, Oh gosh, you have a good night too, sweetheart. Just like that and went on out the door. Mm-hmm. But I like I said, mm-hmm. I recognized what the enemy was trying to do. That's and I it. said, mm-hmm. You can't just do that kind of stuff and I said, those kind of things create a situation. That wouldn't even need to happen. Wouldn't even need to happen. Because today with the people, with the issues that people have going off, and I say, you know, sometimes, you know, the employees, it's like, it's, sometimes it's better to just be quiet. And don't, you know, don't, don't antagonize the person. If they show signs of being already upset, leave them alone. <laughs> you can ignore yeah. what they say. Well, yeah. You can ignore what they say. <laughs> Because we already know what spirit is working, amen. Right. And, and, and true, I mean, we can't get into everything about everything because we already know. And that spirit is more prevalent now with this pandemic. With yeah. things going on, people are just, just say whatever they want to say. So, it's, well, I it's, mean, it's look, y'all remember what happened at Walmart uh, before the pandemic? Because, you know, Walmart's policy has changed over the last couple of years where if you buy something, they will not refund your money. They will give you a card. Unless you have a receipt, huh? No, ma'am. Even if you have a receipt. Oh, they won't refund it unless you have a receipt anyway. But if you pay for something, they will not give you your cash back. They will give you a, a, a Walmart card Oh, with the, no, with the amount on there. Uh-huh. And because I had, when I bought my bike last year, that's when I found out about it, because I bought helmets and baskets and whatever, whatever. I bought a bunch of stuff, you know, and none of it really worked, so I systematically had to take uh, the stuff back. Uh, My credit card, they refunded the credit card. They have to if it's a credit card. But if it's a bank card, uh uh-uh. They gave me a, a Walmart card. I was like, what is this? Oh, so, 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 so. I was like, are you serious to me? I spend my money, my cash money here, and I can't get it back. I got to get it. I was like, okay. Which meant I couldn't spend that money somewhere else. That's how I, I know. I got, I got just what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I would still have to spend it at Walmart, but what happens if I found that somewhere else and I can go and get it? But now I can't spend that money somewhere mm-hmm. else. I'm going to have to spend more money. So I was like, okay. I wasn't happy about it, but I was like, yeah, seriously. But then it wasn't too long after that that um, the man went into Walmart to return something, and they told him no. They told him the same thing. They would not give him back the cash. He pulled out a gun and shot him. What? Shot no, him. I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I said, so, you know, this was something that was, it was, and it was around this, you know, last year. It was last year. It's been within the year. Mm-hmm. And um, so you don't know what store policy is how it's going to affect somebody that's already operating in the wrong spirit in the first place. Mm-hmm. You don't know what you might say. And I've had employees when I said, you know, when I said this, 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 and that. And you know how they'll ask you at the checkout, did you find everything? I said, no. I've had people get an attitude with me because I said no. And I'm like, then why did you ask? I'm like, why you ask? If you don't want to know the truth, why you ask? Y'all just ask because y'all supposed to ask that or whatever. You know, I'm like, seriously, you're going to get an attitude with me because I told you no, I did not find everything I wanted. <laughs> and I'm like, stupid stuff. But you can get people, you never know what's going to escalate. And this is why we as believers, we do need to be careful. We do need to, you know, make sure that, and I, 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 was, uh, I wasn't dreaming, but I think I was in, in that state and where I could see the need for, as we go out, the people who are really going to be obedient to God and to go out and to face this situation head on, and confront, you know, the enemy and speak to the fear, pray for people, those people. We need to be not only armored up, but we need to have our protection with us. Amen. Praise God. 
Because I tell you, it's true. You're going to run into a whole lot of different kind of spirits. You don't, you, we do. We do run into that. And, uh, mm-hmm. and and it's not for us to try and push anything on anyone anyway. So if if they, they, they don't want prayer, they don't want prayer. You know, don't take it personal. It's, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, whatever. If the Lord want to say something and they, they don't want to, they don't want you talking to them, you leave them alone because that's mm-hmm. their right. <laughs> you know what I tell babies? Hey, I don't take it personal. I mean, it's, it's, that's on them. If I feel I need to say something, they say they don't want, they don't want, you know, no, no, thank you. Well, hey, that's what it is. No, no, thank you. Because Jesus didn't force his way on people. <laughs> no, he did not. He did not. It's a free will. This is a free will thing. And uh, well, we can't, you know. And we got to realize that everybody's not going to accept Christ. Everybody's not going to accept Jesus. Everybody's not going to, not everybody, a whole lot of folks not going to. But like you said, we still have a mandate, a uh, commission to reach the lost for Christ. Amen. We still have that commission. It doesn't change it. <laughs> Just because it's a challenge, it doesn't change it at all. <laughs> And it was a challenge to him. You know, I think that's kind of sometimes we forget that. It's like it was a challenge to him, and he met opposition. You know. That's right. It's like, and he said, if the world hated me, what do you think? I just think they right. hate you. That's right. That's right. That's right. He's he's our example. <laughs> he's been through it. And when and he went home, so. they tried to throw him off the cliff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I always look out thinking like it's like they led him to the edge of town. They was going to pitch him or push him over the cliff. And, and the thing about right it, I'll further yeah. tell you, yeah, that's what I love about it. He walked right through them. They couldn't do anything. And I believe God, too, um, unless it's your time, you ain't going nowhere. Right. Our help, our angels, <laughs> our ministering angels are coming minister. They could see hey, that but we you don't. know what, friend? I believe I, be, I believe in that too. But I also believe that you have to know that. Oh you yeah, have to really know that because there's people who are in their grave because they didn't stand on that that word of God, and they didn't, you know, they they gave me in or whatever happened. Something happened, and I remember I was listening to one of Corey Ten Boom's messages, and she was talking about how when they first took her to the consecration camp. And she had had this Bible that was specifically for people who were smuggling, uh, you know, Jews and stuff like that during that time. And she had it on her, under her clothes, strapped to her back or whatever. And uh, she said that as she was in line, she was watching that they were searching everybody. Basically, you know, I mean, almost, I, I could imagine a strip search. That's what I'm, I'm thinking. And she said mm-hmm. she began she was like, Lord, I got this Bible. What am I going to do, you know? Wow. And then she was like, yeah. well, you know, I know your angels are around me, and let them protect me so they can't see me. And she said mm. that the, they did the lady, and then uh, her sister was behind her. They said they did it, got to the lady in front of her, and they went to her sister behind her, and then so on. She said they did not even see her. The Lord had protected her, and they had that mm. Bible while they were there, and they were able to have Bible studies and stuff while they were in the camp. And My God, God made her invisible. Huh? They were invisible. Yeah, they 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 couldn't see her. She said, she said, she said, she said thinking, you know, the the angels are, you know, you know, and they are always around us, but we can't see them. She's going to let them be seen today, so they can't see me. You know, and I was I thought about that. Because years ago, that, that same evangelist young that I was talking about, she told me about a um, a vision that she'd seen around uh, this woman who was, uh, she was, she was a gifted and anointed teacher, and she really focused a lot on spiritual warfare. And I mm-hmm. learned, I, I, I was in the class and trained by her, her husband, ex-husband by that time. But she said she saw a hedge of protection around Elsie. And she said it was big angels. They were huge, like 10, 11 feet tall, and they were big, broad shoulders. And she said they were just surrounding her. They were just like a wall of protection around her. And it was some big boys. And she said that's just what the Lord showed her. This is what he had put 
this is the hedge of protection that he had put mm-hmm. around her. And I'm like, oh, yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord, bring him out. <laughs> bring my boy, come on. <laughs> and I think of that. I keep that image in mind, and it's like, it's not that when we go where we're supposed to go, the Lord tells us. That, you know, he is our head to protect. He has angels that have charge over us. And when we really know and understand that, now I don't just go anywhere because I feel like it. No, if the Lord tells me to go and it's 10 o'clock at night, I'm going. But also last week he was talking on the prayer line and saying that because of the lawlessness that's going on right now in the land, if you're not led by the Holy Spirit, you need to be careful where you're going. And he was talking about people who, you know, it's 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, and you want that ice cream, and you're going to go through the drive through or get whatever it is you're going to get, you can do without mm-hmm. that ice cream. You need to listen to the Holy Spirit to tell you, no, you can buy, just buy you some ice cream tomorrow. Don't go tonight. Yes. Yes. And yes. listen yes. to that because people are going to be dead because they didn't listen or something bad yes. is going to happen. Yes. Some people are, go- are going to die. And some people are going to be caught in a situation that they need not have been in because they're out of place. Right. And it's not Maybe that you can't call place. on Jesus, but you don't want to mm-hmm. keep putting God to the test, especially when he's already told you not to go. That's right. Now, I know I have had times, like you say, where you have felt, and then in, in time past, a long time ago, I would say something. I felt something. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Sure, you mm-hmm. felt something. That was mm-hmm. the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Even when you didn't know no better, mm-hmm. God would help us. You know what I'm saying? And right. that is so very really important. I, I know a lot of things have happened to people, and, and they have had a, a, a visitation of some sort, a thought in their mind, not to do something, but they continued anyway and did just what they wanted to do, and it and it came, you know, uh, harm came to him or something like that. It's it's very important to God has put something in us. I think this is important even when you're not a believer. Right. When you feel not to do something and you can't right. even explain why you feel not to do it. Beloved, right. don't do it. Because right. the Lord could be saving you from destruction. Right. He can be saving you from destruction. Right. And I, I know it's so true. It's so true. It's, it's so true, praise the Lord, that, that he, he cares about us that much. You see, he right. reigns on the just as well as the unjust. Right. So he, he, he warns us. And sometimes people just don't take heed to warnings. Right. Just don't take heed okay. to them. And, and sometimes, sometimes they say, you hear them say, you know what? I thought about, I, you know, some. I was really had a bad feeling about it, or I shouldn't. I was thinking I shouldn't have gone, but I, I went anyway. Or I, mm-hmm. I told somebody, you've been with people, and they said, oh no, no, no. It's like you know what, you go ahead, you go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pass on that. And it's things like that. And it's like we never know. And it's like, well, not all the time. And they said, well, nothing happened. You see, that's not the point. The point is not that nothing may have happened that time, but you gotta when you feel that. You know, but you got to get used to responding because you never know when something would happen. But the the thing about it is for for a believer, it's about being obedient. Oh, well, you know, I went there and nothing happened. Because, like, I started not to go to the movie. So at first I was like, you know, I don't want to see that movie. You know, I don't like, you know, the two two stars. I was like, I don't really care for either one of them. So, you know. And then when I pulled up the thing on the page and I I just kind of looked at the picture and I went back. And looked at the picture again, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, go. And I was like, go? I was like, oh, okay, well, you know. And I went, and I enjoyed myself. It was a night away from whatever, you know. And as we were standing out on the street after the movie, just talking, we were out there for a while, you know, about an hour, we stood out in front of the building talking, uh, me and my daughter and uh, one of her coworkers, and... um, but it's like, okay, so nothing really happened that night. A couple of, you know, drunk ladies walked down, you know, whatever. And it was, you know, nothing. But you see, the thing about it is, it's like I always have an expectation when the Lord, you know, get, instructs me to do something. And all the time, nothing, sometimes nothing happens at all. But I don't discount that. I just 
say, okay, you know, Lord, if you say go, I just enjoyed myself. I laughed. I felt better. I was refreshed. And I was mm-hmm. like, well, you know what? I'm, I'm, I, I'm sure I needed that. I'm sure I needed mm-hmm. that, you know, just you to know, get, you get out mm-hmm. and fresh air and, you know, get away from whatever. And um, mm-hmm. I think what I was thinking about the armor of God, because people talk about the shield, you know, well, they talk about, well, you can't turn your back on the enemy in the battle. It's like, well, you're supposed to be advancing anyway. But it, mm-hmm. once you get into a place, were like most, like, uh, what, what is it? They used to call it the heat of the battle. You were going to be surrounded. And you That's really it. didn't know how to handle yourself because you may have to be engaged in three or four people at the same time. I mean, I, you, you watch the little movies, you see how they do. I said, but then the Lord showed me something years ago. And he said that the glory of the Lord is my rear guard. I never have to worry about what's behind me. Don't have to worry about the back because he got your back. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, you reminded so. me of something. What? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish what no, you're no, that's all. I was just going to say, you say I reminded you of something. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking when you're talking about what we, was, what we were talking about, about uh, not doing something or uh, not going somewhere. And uh, the Lord had given me this. I was in the bathroom, and he told me my sister had planned a trip and had planned it probably for a year to go on a cruise. And not that she had never been on one, but I was in the bathroom and the Holy Spirit said, tell, tell Connie she can't go on that cruise. I'm like, what? You know what? <laughs> and I know, I know his voice when he tells me something. And, you know, mm-hmm. and especially when it's something I don't want to do, I know it's him. <laughs> I say, Lord, I can't tell her that. I'm just being honest. I can't tell her that. She going to think I'm crazy. She done paid a ticket. I'm giving them all these reasons why I can't tell her. Mm-hmm. And then it hit me. I said, but suppose something happens to her and you wasn't obedient. Oh, Lord, I got to tell her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So I did up some praying. And oh. I got some reinforcement. I shared with my other sister to be praying with me because, you know, she said, ooh, I'll be praying with you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so... But they know how God deals with me. Mm-hmm. I had never told her not to do anything. You know what I'm saying, like that. Mm-hmm. So they know how God deals with me. So I, I told her, I say, I told her what I told you, what I heard, and I'm asking you not to go on the cruise. I'm not. I don't know. I don't know nothing other than what He said for you not mm-hmm. to go. I can't mm-hmm. say I'm not gonna. I can't make up anything that's something gonna happen or nothing. No, 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 no. All I'm gonna do is speak what he spoke, and that's it. That's all I can say. He mm-hmm. said to tell you not to go, and so mm-hmm. everybody went. And so she, she uh, wanted to get her money back and blah 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 blah. You know, she didn't want to lose her money. Blah blah blah. But the Lord fixed it where it worked out where she got somebody else to go. And uh, mm-hmm. they reimbursed her, you know what I'm saying? So it was, it was, it worked out. Not, I, and, and nothing happened on the cruise to nobody. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. why it was for her not to go, I still don't know. But mm-hmm. I know it was God. And I mm-hmm. thank God for her listening. Mm-hmm. For, for, for we don't know. It could have been somebody there. I, I mean, we don't know. He could, mm-hmm. He's protecting her. It right. wasn't for the rest of the folks. It was for right. her. Right. I don't know what he protected her from. Right. But I know it was God. And and another time, let me give you another testimony. I was wanting to come home from Dallas, and uh, and I was going to ride with a, a sister that was coming back to Homer because they was in a in between move, and she was in Dallas. Her husband was still in in, in Homer, and so I was going to ride home with her. And um, the Lord told no, 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 no. Let me see. It's the I got it backwards. I was gonna come home because my mother had came to visit with us in Dallas. My sister mm-hmm. came and got my mom, and the deal was I was gonna bring my mom back home. Right. So right. she wanted to ride with me, so she could visit her husband since I was coming, and that way I wouldn't be going back by myself. Uh huh. And the Lord. Told my pastor, it's not a. He told me, Sister Brenda, I don't think it's a good time for you to go. I just don't feel like you should be going. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I said, well, I made a, a, I said I made a commitment. My sister went and got my mom, and the deal was I bring her back. I I have to bring her back because that that's the deal. Okay, that's what I told her. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then my sister in the Lord that wanted to go and visit, come to the home with a visit, her husband said, mm-hmm. I called my husband and told him I was coming, and he told me not to come, and mm-hmm. he told me to tell you not to that come. he feel like you shouldn't be coming either. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, okay? Now, yeah. right. and, and I'm telling you, I'm like, now who? I say, that's your husband. That ain't my husband. I'm just, I'm just being real. <laughs> and then, but, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying, now this is two people that told me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and I thought about it, and I, I you know, at first I'm Faking in, in the flesh, I'm just being honest. And I'm like, come on. Then I started praying. I said, Lord, Lord. Then I thought about it. I got a third witness. I was told by the Lord that I needed to be at a certain place on that Monday, which I wouldn't have been back on that Monday to go mm-hmm. to where he told me to go. So this is three mm-hmm. things. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> wait a minute here. Wait, 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 wait a minute here. I said, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? I got to get my mom home. <laughs> so I'm telling you, even though, I'm just going to be honest with you, even though I had all of this going on, I still felt that I was obligated to bring her home. Mm-hmm. I could not get out of the bed that morning. Mm-mm. I could not get up. I was so sick. I couldn't get out of the bed. Uh-uh. And I said, oh, my God. And I thought about the three, you know. Then I thought, no, nah, I'm sick. I can't move. This is God. <laughs> this is God. I don't know what he's trying to save me from. But I thank God that he is still dealing with me. Because uh-uh. me with my heart here itself would have gotten that car. I don't know what would have happened. Mm-hmm. So I called my friend girl and I told her what was happening with me. And then uh, she said, I'll call you back. She calls me back. She done bought my mom a ticket. She done fixed it for somebody to pick her up at the airport. She took care of everything. (laughs) Isn't that something? Yeah. That is something. So, you know, God will use people. Praise God. He can use people to tell you something about it. You know, the first time, I'm thinking that, oh, he just don't want me to miss church. (laughs) 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 Oh, God. But but God. But I have heard, and I have heard stories uh, even in from where I was going to church where the the pastor has told people, I don't feel like, this is a good time for you to go and you go to wherever they want to go. And it was a family going on a vacation. Mm-hmm. And the minister had, had told them that they didn't think that it was good for them to go at that time. Not that they couldn't mm-hmm. go, but not right now. Mm-hmm. And they went anyway, and they was in a terrible uh, accident, and some, some of them got killed. So, mm-hmm. you know, God does warn us. So it's right. very important. I mean, we're talking about a whole lot of things here, but I think this is the Lord, Amen. For for mm-hmm. people to be cognizant of uh, your actions and pray about things, and it's mm-hmm. very important for us to pray about things and uh, and not be hard headed and, and want to do it our way because God is trying to protect us from something. And, you know, because he knows what calling, uh, he knows the calling on my life. He knows what he has me here for. He didn't want me to shorten my, my lifespan by being right. disobedient. Right. So he protected me, and I praise him, and I thank him for it right now today. Amen. For his protected, protection yes, and for Lord. stopping me. Hey, yes, Shady, they can hear y'all. For stopping me, hallelujah, for doing what I want to do. And do what he says to do. And so that Monday morning, I got up, girl. Look, feel like it or not, I got up and went where the Lord told me to go. <laughs> because 
who knows? It might not, nothing may not have happened on the road or anything. It may have been for me to just be in place to go where I needed to go that Monday. But our plans, you said a scripture tells us that we can make plans, but the Lord guides our steps. So we need to allow the Lord to guide our steps. We can make plans, but plans can change. And you can still get to do some of the things you want to do, but it's just not the timing. We need to be in God's timing for things that we need to do. It's very important. Timing is very important. I was thinking yesterday, uh, my husband had called someone we hadn't talked to in months. And then when he did call him, I was hearing the phone call, uh, the timing was so perfect. Mm-hmm. The timing was so perfect. And when he got off the phone, I told him, I said, golly, timing is perfect, isn't it? He said, yeah, baby, sure is. Yeah. Mm. I tell you, I mean, just being led by the Holy Spirit, by being led by God can save us from a whole lot of stuff, and it can, it, and also it can be a blessing. Mm-hmm. It can be a blessing. It can work all kind of ways. Just being in God's timing is very important. Right, right. I think that in, well, when you were saying, talking about what we're talking about, but we have to be led by the Spirit, and that's the thing. When we are led by the Spirit, you know, the Bible tells us that, you know, those who are led by the Spirit, we are the sons of God, but we have to. We have to be obedient in every area of our lives. And, you know, we, we talk about obedience, and Saul has, like, the greatest example of disobedience that there is in the Bible. I mean, not that other people didn't do wrong, but his disobedience was so serious that God just, boom, took the kingdom away from him. His spirit departed from him. And at that point, God saw out somebody else. And there was no repentance for Saul for that act of disobedience. None. And it's like, okay, but you know your history, dude. These people are the same people who attacked the Israelites in the wilderness who attacked the old people and the women and children. They attacked them. They didn't attack the fighting force. They went around behind. And God said that he was going to wipe them out from the face of the planet. Not all of them. And here this man, their king, was one of the descendants of those people, and you spared his life talking about. And, and what did Saul do? He told one lie after another. Oh, well, you know, I, I, I saved the best to sacrifice to God. And Samuel, that's when that we get that infamous phrase, obedience is better than sacrifice. And then Saul said, mm-hmm. oh, well, I was afraid of the people. It's like, well, which lie are you going to tell? Mm. Which one? Which lie are you gonna tell? Which one? Which one? Which lie is God supposed to believe? Bottom line is that you disobeyed. Now I got to give you the boot. I mean, it's just that's just that's my you know transversion of it. But that's it. It's like you know we never know what one single act of disobedience is gonna cost us. And so, in right. Saul's case, that act of disobedience cost him and his whole blood and his bloodline the kingdom forever mm. mm-hmm. and god and then to make matters worse god sent an evil spirit to him to torment him it's like seriously <laughs> you know, like, but he wasn't playing he wasn't playing with him we never know what and i you know i've done some things in my life what i felt like you know i shouldn't do them and i did them anyway and the consequences were devastating. Mm. I, you know, we learn obedience when we hear, and now when I hear the voice of God, you know, the, the Bible says that we shouldn't harden our heart. And it's not just about salvation. It's about everything. When we harden our heart against the voice of the Lord, when we don't recognize, it's like people say, well, if you don't recognize God's voice and pray and ask him to help you to recognize the voice, silence the other voices. Silence all the other voices first. Every yeah, voice is yeah. in silence. Then you can listen for God's voice. And people will always say, well, God always speaks in the still small voice. Say, no, that's a lie. That's a lie from the pit. Because he did that one time with Elijah in the cave. I mm-hmm. said, but then he had his complete and total attention. He didn't have to scream at it. I said, because after the earthquake and the whirlwind and the tornado and everything else, <laughs> Everything else, you know, but he sent it. 
He, it was yeah. a God. He sent it. So it's like, but then when he spoke to him, that was a personal thing. He had a personal relationship with him. Amen. Elijah. You know, so that's the thing about it. A lot of stuff can be happening around us, but when Elijah heard all this stuff going on, didn't he go to the mouth of the cave? He went to the front of the cave. He knew something was going on. Come on. And he waited there. But the Lord still told him, the Lord correct. He said, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm the only person. Oh, so, 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 so. God said, what are you doing here? He still asked my question. I don't want to know what you're doing here. <laughs> you know, and we, we have to know when God is speaking to us. No one can call themselves a true believer in Christ and not recognize his voice because the Bible says my sheep know my voice. Mm -hmm. It says, and another they will not follow. So if you're following some other voice, then you don't belong to God. I'm, you know, I'm sorry to tell you, but that's what my Bible says. I don't know what yours say, And you don't know it either because you haven't read it. You don't know what your Bible says because you haven't read it. That's why you'll easily follow somebody else. The bottom line is today, like no other time in the history of mankind, we must recognize the voice of God and we must act on whatever it is that he's telling us because he is instructing us. He is trying to protect us from whatever. And like you said, I'm going to say that if God warned you three times, then I think it was something pretty serious. Mm -hmm. That's just from listening to what you said. It's something pretty serious. Who knows if that other family got three warnings or not? Don't know. Don't know if they got three warnings or not. But you got three warnings and, and still, you know, and, it's, and that's the whole point. We still want to do things our way. And so that mm -hmm. was an area of your life where you had surrendered to, but you know better than that now. Mm -hmm. And as the word goes forward, people understand that today, right now, we have got to be obedient to what God tells us to do because our lives are at stake. And we can be cut short because we're in the wrong place. That's true. At the wrong time. And when God doesn't send you somewhere, no matter who else sent you, you better turn them down and say, no, nah, that's okay. Y'all go ahead, but I'm not going. And sometimes mm -hmm. a whole group don't need to go. Like you said about your sister, you don't know. But, you know, it seemed to me that there was an assignment against her specifically. Mm -hmm. Because nothing happened. And sometimes whatever the enemy has planned, it's for you, and if you're not there, nothing happens. People say, well, nothing happened. They say, well, but it wasn't for, it, it for y'all. It was for me. Lord told me not to go. Not that he mm -hmm. said that y'all shouldn't go or couldn't go, but he told me not to go. So we have to understand the difference. When the Lord said, don't nobody go or whatever, there's, there's a difference between that. But when he tells us, whatever he tells us, we don't need to know why. There's a point in our walk when we don't need to know why. We just need to do. We just need to Amen. obey exactly what he says because we can't see the things that God sees, and God doesn't all the time show us or explain himself, and he don't have to. He is God he after that. all. And he don't have to always tell me why. Because I used to ask God, I used to say, Lord, I don't understand why you're doing this. I don't understand. I don't understand. And he just asked me one day, he said, what is it that you feel like you just got to understand? Mm -hmm. And I was like, um, um, okay, I, <laughs> I stopped asking because <laughs> that was said in such a way as to like, look, I'm God, not you. <laughs> and that is important, too, because I did think about that uh, because she did ask the question. You're telling me not to go. It was a church uh, going on the cruise. Mm -hmm. I said I did pray about that because I wouldn't want to be warning you and something happened to, well, you know, with the whole cruise, with the church. Mm -hmm. But I don't, he didn't say anything. I don't feel anything. Mm -hmm. He told me to tell you. He didn't tell me to tell them because she even had a sister on there that asked her, well, well, well should I be going? <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't blame her. You know what I'm saying? If God told your sister to tell you not to go, what what about me? Right. You know? Right. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't for them. It was for her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And if when you know, and I, I do know that there are some things that God will just as an individual, and then there are some things that are you know as far as a community, so that it, it involves a family or whatever, you know, more than one person, and like that family that went and people died, and it's like you know, I, I remember a little girl, and I don't remember, um, uh, I think that last school shooting. And uh, we haven't had any of those, but we have all this other stuff that's going on now. But because of the fact that the Bible says that lawlessness, that spirit of lawlessness has already been released in the earth. It's already been released. And people, uh, the little girl that was killed down in Atlanta on the 4th of July, you know, and the sad thing about it is that all the people who say protesting is justified and and, you know, those people have a right to be angry. But then when you turn your gun on a car that has, no matter, even if it wasn't a child and there's anybody there, you just open fire on a vehicle, people in the car. You intend to kill somebody, and you don't care. Mm -hmm. But they're at So the that's front. what happened? Because I didn't hear about that one. Yeah, somebody girl, eight years old, she, uh, mm -hmm. they somewhere on the 4th of July, and they were coming back. I don't know where they were coming from, but it was after 10 o'clock at night. And it was a, some man had gotten killed near a burnout Wendy's, and they were protesting down there. This was after the Floyd boy got killed. And oh, so okay, yeah. And they by the police down there, and the little girl was in the car, and her mother and somebody else, They uh, the stories that I read, there were two different stories. They There was a barricade set up. Now, the police mm -hmm. said that the barricade was illegal, but it doesn't matter. It was still a barricade. And they, try, uh, they were attempting to pull in through the barricade, and they come to three men, armed men, black men, armed men, with guns out. They come right by them. They pulled up along. They shot in the car. At least two of them opened fire in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And the little girl was killed. Wow. So we don't, you know... Uh, I, I know that the woman wasn't saved, but she's lost her child, regardless. Yeah. We don't know. And here's the, like I said, my thing was that all of you people who've been posting how justified it is that what happens when something like this happens, it's bound to happen. It's bound to happen. That somebody, some innocent child is killed, but why would you take your child to a protest in the first place? Mm. Because mm. they generally end in violence. Mm -hmm. If you want to protest, that's fine. Leave your child somewhere else. Don't put your children at risk. But when you are led by the Spirit of God, you know that that's not his way anyway. That's mm -hmm. not his way. That's you true. can't stop people from doing what they're doing. Even during the uh, Civil Rights Movement, even the peaceful protests, became violent. That's true. Because there's always somebody there that's not there for that's the same right. reason. Oh, it's also, mm -hmm. it's like, no, but see, history has told us that's how it goes. That's oh, well, right. you know, somebody came in from this, like, it's like, it doesn't matter. They always do that. They're always going to be people who they have their own agenda. And they're going to show up, and yes, they're going to incite violence and, and, and rioting and things like that. But you already know that. Because it always happens. It doesn't not happen. It happens all the time. And the violence escalates till some people are killed. That's the way it works. It doesn't work any other way. And I, you know, we watched like the, the, the videos of the civil rights movement and they turn the fire hoses and stuff on the people. Peaceful protesters walking down the street, you know, um, whatever else that they did to them, they always turn violent. It doesn't matter. And, you, and nowadays, in most of these places where people are allowed to carry weapons, those people are not coming to those protests unarmed. They're not. Somebody's going to get hurt. Put yourself... Right. Because of the hearts of men. Mm -hmm. yeah, because and, of the hearts of men. Uh, every, yeah, people are... The enemy is going to work through people. And if oh, your yeah. heart is hardened... And uh, you, you're going to be used. You're open to be used by the enemy. And, and he's all on his job 24-7. He, ne he never stops. Right. So, yeah, just what you're saying. And uh, 
I just know we know there, there uh, there's not going to be peace on this earth until the Prince of Peace returns. Right. Uh, we can, you know, we don't like things and we have a right to voice things, you know, that we don't like. But uh, all of this is not going to bring peace. Right. And that's man's way. That's man's way. That's man's way. That's way. That's way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when we don't do things God's way, I mean, the time for mixing what the world says, with what the Bible says, it's over. And I mean, and because that mixture is what has gotten us to the place where we are today, where many people don't believe. Some people don't know what to believe. There were many were caught unawares because they were never taught. I mean, and there's, 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 you know, churches who don't, don't, and they, they might as well cut the book of Revelation out of their Bible. Because they don't believe in Satan, they don't believe in the devil, they don't believe in any of that. Mm-hmm. So true. if you don't believe it, just because you don't believe it, don't stop it from being That don't true. mean it's not true. That's it. <laughs> and now It exists whether you believe it or not. Right. And since Revelation chapter 12 tells us that when Satan is cast down, he's coming down and he says, whoa, to the inhabitants of the earth. Because he's coming with great wrath. We, not, we haven't seen the wrath yet. But a Come few, on. About a month ago, when the Lord was telling me in John 10, 10, it said uh, that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But he said he's already stolen almost everything he could steal from you. But when the enemy steals the word of God, the very word of God from you, what hope do you have, really? Hmm. Without the word? You don't have no hope. And That's he's true. killing. Now he's busy killing up anybody that he can kill. And the destruction is coming. It's on the way. The killing is going on right now, but the destruction is on the way. We're about to see that whole scripture fulfilled. But Jesus said, but I came, came, past tense, came, so that my sheep will have life and more abundantly. So here again we see the darkness and the light existing side by side, darkness getting darker and the light getting brighter. That's right. Which side are you? Are you in the light? Are you a child of light or are you a child of darkness? Mm-hmm. If you are a child of light, your light will get brighter and brighter. And when light comes in, light expels the darkness. Darkness and light cannot occupy the same space. No matter how bright your light is, it will expel the darkness. Darkness never overcomes light. It's not designed to do that. But if you're in darkness, your darkness is only going to get darker. And there are people who are not going to see the light or accept the light. They, because That's they've true. been blind. Their hearts and their minds have been blinded by the God of this world. They've been so deceived. And the spirit of deception that is about to be released upon the earth. I mean, this is what the Bible already tells us. We, just, we have to recognize that this is what we're facing. This is what we're dealing with. I do not expect for people to get any better because, like Jesus said, I'm not praying for the world. That's right. I do want, I'm praying for the body of Christ so that we will get up off our lazy butts and do what we're supposed to do. If we would get, we cannot, there are things that cannot be stopped. They cannot be changed. But God mm-hmm. says that we can minimize the impact if we would do what we're supposed to be doing. So the whole point is that, Lord, can I stop the killing? Can I stop the, you know, the, the disease and, the, you know, the pandemics and the plagues and the earthquake? No, because my word already said, the word of God already promises us that this is going to happen. Jesus prophesied mm-hmm. these things himself. His word has gone out. It cannot be changed. But when we do what we're supposed to do, the souls can be saved. And that is all that God is concerned about. This earth is destined for fire, destruction by fire. It's coming. No more water but fire. I remember the other song that said, no water but fire next time. Well, the earth is destined for destruction by fire. So I'm not concerned about saving the planet and the ozone layer and all of that. Because you know what? When Jesus comes back for that thousand years, all of that stuff is going to be restored. That's it. All the foolishness they're talking about, about global warming, which is a lie. But all of that stuff, the earth will be back in balance because the creator will be on earth. That'd be fine for that thousand years, and then after that, 
you know, everybody's going to be facing judgment after the final battle. But for right here, right now, the souls that need to, it's the battle is for souls. That's what this battle is. And it's That's already right. started. And, if, and I tell people, that if you haven't already begun to fight, and if you don't believe in fighting, if, first of all, if you don't believe in fighting, you'd be the first to die. And you're either going to die a physical death or a spiritual death. Hopefully not both. Mm, but true. death is coming to the people of the earth. It's coming to the people of the earth because the enemy is not playing. And if, we, if you're in his playground, can't nobody save you. I'm not going to go in the devil's territory and pull you out of there. You ain't got no business over there in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not going to go out of where I'm supposed to be. You know, when he come over here on my territory, that's different. But I'm not going to go yeah, yeah. in his playground and, and expect, no, 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 no. I ain't got no business over there. Mm-hmm. And you don't have any business over there. And if you're, over there, if you're playing around with darkness, and because the word tells us that in the last days, they said that uh, sorcery will increase. Well, we, we know that the word that they use for sorcery is translated pharmakia. And Billy Graham translated that back in the 60s. So that, that knowledge has been available that it is medicine. Pharma, that's where the word pharmacy comes from. It's medication. And look at what the prescription drugs are doing to people. You can't, you get, there's some drugs they prescribe to you. They tell you if you stop taking them, you'll die. Yeah. So that's that's crazy. And you were talking about something like that yourself, that some of the symptoms, the side effects. So between that and the illegal drugs, a lot of folks are running up out of here real quick over that. But then there's also that, and the, but the wickedness will increase. And so the wickedness of man, you know, Paul lists those works of the flesh and witchcraft is, is definitely on the rise. It's definitely on the rise. Yes, and it, all wickedness is is rising. Amen. Like you said, the world is getting darker, and it's time for the church to shine brighter and brighter. And God's elect gonna shine brighter and brighter. It it is we're in the dark dark times, and it is time for us to be about our Father's business. Amen. Amen. Well, I think we can close out in prayer now. I think we've covered pretty much everything that we need to discuss. And um, we've, you know, prayed uh, as led by the Spirit. And there is something you had said earlier, but just being led by the Spirit today. And um, I believe that our focus is more on the body of Christ today than on anything else because we need to... The, to wake up. We need the wake-up call. You know, the, and I figure like the alarm has been ringing and we've been, we didn't hit the snooze button too many times. We need to go ahead on and get up. Amen. And arise and do what God is calling us to do. And um, one of the things that's been really, I've been concerned about and um, which we'll have to deal with is what the Bible does tell us that there was going to be uh many false prophets. It said many false prophets will arise. And um, we don't want to be deceived because Jesus told us so many times not to be deceived, not to be deceived. And there are many false prophets already, but they're just coming out like roaches. And the stuff that they're saying, and many people are going to be led astray. And I just, uh, I just pray that we can minimize the impact of that. Some people can't, you know, they're going to believe whatever they believe. You know, you can't stop them, but at least if we, if we get up and do what we're supposed to do, then like I said, I believe that the, um, that there will be souls that will be, will not succumb to that of the enemy. And just like we have, we use the, the social media, the enemy's using it too. Oh yeah. He's using it too. And always have, but I mean, they take. I mean, he takes advantage of the pandemic to spread his gospel, and we need and the people who are proper lying and just false prophets. They just false prophets because that's what the Bible calls them. But that's a, something of concern. But I, I, my prayer for the false prophets is that they be exposed, 
for what they yeah. mean. Yeah. So that people will know that they're false prophets and don't follow them. You know, you can choose to do whatever you want to do, but at least that, you know, I pray that if they're exposed, then they'll know. So, would you like to pray? So we're closing out? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this time of sharing and thank you for your word. Thank you for how you pray. You have already prayed for your people, the body of Christ, and that we would believe on the words of the disciples, and we do, and that many would believe on our words and that our life would implement that you are head of our lives, you are God of our lives, you are Lord of our lives. Father, we just pray also for laborers, believers, that are truly believers, that the, their hearts would be touched to do the command of God, the commission which he gave in Matthew 19 in the 28th verse for us to go into the world and preach the gospel. Praise God. Not so much as having people come, which they can't too much now with this COVID-19, but Jesus being glorified, hallelujah, he needs to be glorified, not the church, not the church building or the name of the church, not the pastor, not the first lady, not none of that. Jesus is the star, amen, and he's, going to sh he's shining bright, and he will forever shine bright, and we need to have people come into a saving knowledge of him, Jesus Christ. So, Father, we just thank you. We just praise you. We thank you for laborers. We thank you for more laborers in the vineyard, and we thank you for the fruit, hallelujah, that shall remain, hallelujah. We just give you glory and honor and praise because you're God, and you love us so much. We thank you for your love, and as we were talking today, I, I, it just helped me to even realize even more. It's so good to talk about the things of God, and then you get you, you just get charged up, hallelujah, and, and the joy of what you have done and are doing for us in our lives is so exciting to know that we are loved, truly loved unconditionally by our Father in heaven and that Jesus Christ gave his life. And it wasn't for naught because he's going to have a people. <laughs> God has a people. Yes, it's a remnant. There is a remnant. Hallelujah. Are you going to be a part of that remnant? Are you going to answer your call? Are you going to do and be what God has called you to be? Yes. Seek the Lord. Seek him. Because without seeking him, you cannot be what you need to be. Yes, Lord. You need him, hallelujah, dwelling in you, that you can be all that you're called to be. Hallelujah, yes. Lord. We just thank you. We just praise you. We give you glory and honor. And we thank you for this time of fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise your name, O oh God. Yes, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. And, Lord, as your word goes forward, Lord, let your anointing rest upon your people. Strengthen us and encourage us to move forward in the things that you have called us to do, O oh God, so that we may be the instruments and the vessels of honor that you have chosen us for, O oh Lord, in these days and in this time. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you glory and honor and we praise. Father, I ask that you stir up the gifts. Stir up the gifts that you have given your people, O oh Lord, the, for the prophets and for the evangelists, Lord, that you, and the teachers and the pastors, the shepherds, O oh God, and the, uh, that you have called, Lord, and anoint them with the gifts that you know what is best for us, O oh Lord. And as we go forward in this time, you said, these signs shall follow them that believe, O oh Lord. Let us manifest the signs. Let us manifest the light of, and glory that you have given us, O oh God, for this day and for this time. Let us with boldness go forward and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. And, Lord, help us to surrender every aspect of our lives, O oh God, to your spirit, to your leading and your guidance, Lord. 
Help us, Lord, to renew our minds every day, to put off the old man and to put on the new, in Jesus' name. And I thank you. I thank you that your word is true, O oh Lord, and that you watch over your word to perform it. And let your word be so, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and thank you, Lord.